back, my friends, to the show that never ends. So glad you could attend, and today we're going to take a look at VHS 2. That's right, the sequel to VHS. It's another found footage anthology film. Now, in this one, we get the wraparound story, which is the story of a PI and his assistant who are going and looking for a missing college kid. Well, when they come across his uh, house, they find that inside are massive amounts of VHS tapes. Apparently, he collects rare and unusual VHS tapes, and a few of them he has sitting next to all these monitors. Well, the PI's assistant decides to watch these videotapes, or at least some of them, and see if they get any clues of possibly where the kid might be. Doesn't quite a, a whole lot of sense, but in, it's okay. You know, they, they figure, hey, let's just see what's on these and maybe see what the kid's into, and maybe that'll give them some leads. Well, and that, that, that's where we get the four short films uh, attached together. Are there four short films that are on each one of these VHS tapes that the assistant watches? The first film that we're told is this one called uh, Clinical Trials. It was directed by Adam Wingard. It's got a guy who's got a camera for an eye, which is where we get all our found footage shots from uh, the majority of them. Was. Well, he ends up seeing more than he planned on with this robotic eye as he starts to see some spirits. And man, are they pissed off and very grody looking. And we see the creepiness happen from there as he sits there and uh, tries to deal with the fact that he sees these uh, spirits around his house who aren't very happy. Uh, he also meets a girl who can hear the spirits, and we see how they deal with these really uh, angry uh, apparitions, if you will. I, I like this story. Adam Wingard also starred in it, directed very well, loved the idea and the concept of the camera eye, was a really good explanation of the found footage, which you really need uh, in this uh, where you don't have someone kind Constantly say, oh, I've got to shoot everything. We have to shoot everything. They did a lot better. And in fact, all four of the short films in this better in not having someone say, oh, make sure you shoot everything. Make sure you shoot everything. No, we don't have that in here, which I do appreciate. At least they don't have that. They try other ways to uh, explain how we get the found footage stuff. Uh, with the clinical trials one, just loved the concept. Adam Wingard also had a story in the original VHS, and he also did the letter Q in the ABCs of Death, and I liked his style and his story in general. It was well paced, and definitely they didn't use a whole lot of effects going on outside some makeup for the ghost ghosties going on and I really like that very minimalistic they worked within like a small budget but yet they were able to give a creep factor and definitely tell a decent horror story about ghosts and what you can actually perceive uh, so definitely a, a good job there and definitely kept my interest uh, uh, I just really enjoyed this move uh, this short film now the next one that they had in here was called a ride in the park which at first, kind of looked like your kind of standard zombie story. But what I liked about it is, uh, well, the story is this guy on a bike, and he ends up running into a zombie horde and becoming one of them. And the camera is still on his helmet and still running. So we get to see basically the acts of a zombie after he has turned, which I love that concept. In, in fact, it was a concept I had many moons ago for a film, and they just pulled it right from my head and executed it on screen. Now, this time around, we've got director Greg Hale and Eduardo Sanchez. Yes, Eduardo, the guy who brought us the Blair Witch, the basically godfather, if you will, of found footage films. He did some great creative stuff in here with the found, with the camera uh, that I really enjoyed. The POV camera really got interesting camera angles, yet they made sense, and, and just a great seeing the perspective from the zombie's eyes of his life, basically, however long or short it may be. Plenty of gore effects in this story, folks. In fact, uh, plenty of gore from here on out, from the second story on, lots of gore. The gore just gets ratcheted up. Gore whores out there, you will love VHS too. This is one had to have Eli Roth salivating because of all the gore in here. But it was well-placed gore. It wasn't just done uh, comical or over the top. It, it has a purpose. In this case, it's a zombie film. You need gore because you gotta have the intestines and stuff get eaten do that very well. Looked really great on camera and definitely uh, just liked that uh, interesting little perspective on the zombie story. Though we've seen many, many zombie stories before, seeing it told from the perspective of the zombie was an interesting little twist, if you will, and definitely a surprise there. 
Now, we uh, third story we get is probably my favorite story, and probably the most solid story, and that's called Safe Haven. Now, this was directed by uh, Gareth Evans, who directed Raid the Redemption, and it also direct, co-directed by Timo... Uh, Unfortunately, I can't pronounce his last name, but he did letter L for libido in the ABCs of Death, which was a really kind of surreal one out of that collection, but uh, definitely well shot, which Safe Haven is. Now, they do a great explanation here because they're an investigative crew uh, trying to get into this cult and find out what's going on with these kids in this cult. And uh, they've got hidden cameras in their buttons, and they're carrying regular digital cameras as well. So there you've got the explanation, plus there's security cameras in the compound so that's how we get all our perspectives there and that jumping between those was really great and a little bit seamless not too jarring at all i i liked how they explained the reasoning for the cameras and the guy they got to play the lead cult guy was just fantastic batshit crazy in fact everybody the, the story just in general is really good from the makeup effects to the storyline to the characters everything was really solid with safe haven I, I think this was one the probably most solid of the four films though they all are decent and uh higher quality than the first one i think they, they're definitely improvements but safe haven definitely goes in a direction too towards the end you don't really expect it to go <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't believe they carried it out the way they did, and it was a pleasant surprise, let me tell you. Uh, so definitely Safe Haven's probably my favorite of the four stories. The last story I found more interesting, it, it's an alien abduction slumber party, okay? So these kids are having an overnight, their buddies are over, and his sister and his her friends are over, and there's kind of clashing going on. They, these guys like to shoot their own videos, they strap a camera to their dog as... <laughs> As kind of their interest, you know, their their cameraman, if you will, and we see how the sibling rivalry uses video to get revenge on each other and and tape each other because basically bug each other and do what brothers and sisters or brothers and brothers do is annoy the piss out of each other. Well, they do that very well. Great chemistry amongst the characters. Really felt like these were siblings uh, and, and true kids. Okay, and then the aliens show up, and I. I didn't mind the aliens showing up, though we have seen aliens before in the VHS anthology films. We saw it in the previous as well. But uh, And I liked the look of the aliens and definitely gave a creep factor. Really gave a creep factor without doing a, a, many jump scares at all, but definitely had the creep factor. And the fact that the story is being told from the back of the dog was also interesting. I, I kind of, that was a great perspective to take on it. Um, again, you got to give a little bit of suspension of belief with the camera work, but for the most part, really well done and believable camera work. It's jittery and it's some shaky cam, but modern digital cameras now are a lot better, so uh, it's a more improved picture, if you will, than what we've seen in maybe other found footage films. Still, the, the Slumber Party Alien Abduction was a fun story and definitely had that creep factor. Everything is amped up in VHS, from the quality of the editing and the stories to the gore for all you gore whores out there to just the wraparound story in general. It is a massive, not a massive improvement, but it is a, a, a level up from the first one. It definitely is an improvement from the first one. And in this one, I gave it four and a quarter, three quarters stars, okay? Four and three quarters, not quite five yet, okay? Only because I would like to see some explanation a little bit more of of why these digital footage is on VHS, you know? Another wraparound story, maybe giving a little more explanation of why these creepy shit things are on VHS. And I know that's kind of the mystery in that with it, but definitely kind of would like to see an explanation there. But that wraparound story definitely has its own creep factor and gore factor to it as well. And in general, VHS 2 is an improvement over the first one. Four and three quarters stubs, almost to the five. Can't wait to see the next installment in what is becoming an anthology franchise. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stop.